Good morning. Well, it's another one of those um, blah days out there, right? Blah days out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at myself. And, um, why is it that we humans so react to overcast, blah weather? Because all week, when it's been overcast, I've been like, and I hate going into a classroom and it's like, God, I'm tired this morning. That's how I feel. Now, fortunately, this week, the person that I usually, <laughs> I don't usually say that, but sometimes when I do feel that way, that's all you can think of saying is, oh, I feel so tired. But everybody else feels that way too. So when you say it, you get, you know, commiseration. People say, yeah, me too. And, uh, and Floyd, do you feel that way too? Or do you feel the same all the time? I don't know. I just, this kind of weather explains the, you know, the Blue Tuesday or something that was ha that happened last week. The saddest day of the year. Uh, yeah, I don't have that day. I'm, I'm not sad. I'm not sad. I'm tired, <laughs> and right now it's during this kind of weather, so I don't think cats fit that way, because they're always the same, just about. Aren't you, Floyd? Yeah, I just read uh, an article about how, you know, how people always say that, that dogs are so in tune with their, their owners they're humans and that you know dogs look at our fa faces to to uh, get reactions and then you know change their reactions accordingly well according apparently cats are no different cats when you have a good relationship with your cat then the cats look to their humans for guidance so if there's something unfamiliar in the room where the cat and the human are, the cat will you know, look at the human to see how the human's reacting to this unfamiliar thing and then alter its own behavior. Is that what you do, Floyd? I don't know. But it's kind of weird. She was originally my daughter's cat. And uh, when my daughter left to go to university, she took her along and uh, they uh, moved together from one to another place. And then every time my daughter came home for uh, a break from school or something, the cat came along. And if my daughter ever, uh, yeah, so it went, she went back and forth with my daughter for a while. and. Um, then uh, I think my daughter finally moved in with her boyfriend and uh, who uh, is allergic to cats. And so Floyd stayed here for a little while. I don't remember what exactly happened, but I don't know. At some point, um, when, whenever my daughter came to come and pick the cat, the cat would disappear for some reason. Anyway, it turned out that it was just uh, not happy and would hide from my daughter for some reason. Something happened at one point and uh, the cat uh, didn't want to go with my daughter and she stayed with us. No, well, I <laughs> So the last time that my daughter brought the cat over to stay for a while, um, that got stretched out and stretched out and stretched out. And I said, finally, I said, you know, you're not getting this cat back. 
And he says, yeah, I don't know, because my, my boyfriend's you know, allergic and all this. So then uh, Floyd came to stay with us forever. But we cannot, she cannot figure out what it was that caused Floyd to not like her. And uh, now, whenever my daughter comes to visit, the cat disappears before my daughter ever shows up. Go figure. Um, other people come over, visitors, and the cats come in and out, or if they are frightened by them on their arrival, they disappear after they arrive. But my daughter very rarely shows up when my daughter, my cat very rarely shows up when my daughter's room. We just don't know. She does not know. She loves cats. She loves dogs. She wouldn't do anything. Strange, strange. So, you know, obviously the cat is getting the triggers from her humans that my daughter's coming in. What's, you know, what's Floyd going to react? Boy, that was a long spiel about nothing. <laughs> well, you know, cat, cat reactions. Okay, now I have a... I'm working on my morning class. I, I woke up during the night and thought about it. I have a student in the evening class who just uh, paid hundreds of dollars for three months in advance because he likes the class so much and he's planning on coming to it. Visitors, you know, non-Canadians, non-permanent residents have to pay for every hour of instruction, a month at a time. So show up or not, it's paid for. And he paid for three months. And I'm thinking, you know, what he really wants is speaking and he's been getting that. And next week I'm switching it over to a different thing that I'm gonna be teaching and will he mind? And will he come more than just once a week, which he's been doing? And you know, all these things were going through my head, like they do at night, every time. And you know, but as my manager said, you cannot cater to one student and you cannot structure your your whole course or curriculum on one student and if you do it usually ends up not turning out very well anyway so I'm just not going to think about it and zoom on and realize that there is lots of speaking for him in the class anyway. Things I worry about like really win the lottery I'm out of here. <laughs> Something I can't remember now. Whatever. Okay, well, um, probably going to go to my daughter's and my son's. Well, I'll go to Guelph this afternoon later for a drive. We have some mails to drop off for them. So I'll do that. We'll do that. I'll go along. Yeah, I'll be caught up by then. Caught up. I'll have gotten plenty done by then. I had a dream about something happening to the photocopier. I woke up with that one. <gasps> what happens? What do I do? What if the photocopier isn't working when I get there on Sunday? What will I do? <laughs> well, I've got another photocopier right in the next. I could go over there and photocopy there. And then... But you know, the, the anxiety, it's, yeah, it's just natural, I guess. But why does it have to pop up in the middle of the night? disturb my sleep. Finally looked up what I wanted to look up ages ago. I was wondering about Michael Jackson and using this anesthetic as a sleep aid, which is why he died. And why, why would he do that? Well, I know why he did that. Remember what I said? I don't like dreaming. I love anesthesia. I love going under. 
okay? Other people say, oh, I don't like getting anesthesia. I have no bad reactions with it or anything. I just get an anesthetic and wake up, right? It's a great sleep because it's a dreamless sleep. So that's what I figure Michael Jackson was doing. He was avoiding dreaming by going under. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's my theory. Which also probably, as, uh, as Dave mentioned, messes with your mind. Because dreaming is how your mind, you know, lets go and relaxes. So, something to think about, eh? Why Michael Jackson took that stuff and died from it? I doubt. Without a dream.